Hi, I'm Carol Galanti. Welcome to Every Bite Counts. Hi, I'm Carol Galanti. Welcome to Every Bite Counts, where we make plant-based recipes that not only taste great, but are healing for your body, both physically and emotionally. The recipes are designed to bring your body back to a state of balance and well-being. Here, the kitchen is the pharmacy, and the food is the medicine. So, let's get started. Today, we're going to be making a kale salad with currants, sunflower seeds, cherry tomatoes, and a cashew parmesan cheese. Then we're going to follow that with tempeh millet croquettes with sun-dried tomatoes served with a pineapple chutney. And we're going to round things off with coconut dusted chocolate apricot truffles. So we're going to start with the dessert today because it needs to be chilled a little bit afterwards. So we're going to start with um, using, I use a food processor for this. You can also use a spice grinder or a smaller food processor if you like. I like to start by putting the almonds in and grinding them first to get them to the consistency I like so that you're not stuck with a lot of chunks in your truffles. So we're just going to pulse this or turn it on for a little bit. And just let that run until the almonds are a good consistency. And then we're going to add the dates as a natural sweetener, the orange zest, which adds a lot of nice, strong orange flavor, and a little bit of a pinch of sea salt. Put the cover back on, mix that together. Perfect. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna put this into the bowl into a, a large mixing bowl and then we need to make our raw chocolate so we start the raw chocolate I heated some water in a pan and then placed a metal mixing bowl over it so that we can gently heat our coconut oil without raising the temperature too much just need to melt it until it becomes liquid just takes a couple minutes we're gonna add maple syrup we want to avoid using refined white sugar in our desserts, so I like to use maple syrup as an alternative. It's rich in nutrients. A little bit of vanilla extract and the raw cacao. Now raw cacao is raw form of chocolate. When you're in the grocery store and you're on the checkout aisle and you see all the chocolate that is there um, tempting you to buy it, that chocolate is cooked. Any of the nutrients that the chocolate had are gone because of the heating process. Raw cacao, on the other hand, is rich in antioxidants, it's rich in minerals, and it's actually good for you. All right, so we've melted our chocolate. I'm going to remove that from the heat. Just let that sit for a moment. And I'm going to add in our chopped apricots. We'll give that a little stir, mix all the ingredients together, and add in a little bit of the chocolate sauce. I don't use all of it, I add a little bit at once. Stir it in until you get the consistency that you'd like. Oh, you know what? I forgot my wild orange essential oil. This is my secret ingredient to make the flavor just pop in this recipe. It's completely optional. You don't have to use it. But just adding two drops of wild orange essential oil really makes that chocolate flavor pop. So I'm going to add that in for the rest of this. And there we have it. So. The mixture can be, if it's too thin, you can put it into the refrigerator to chill, to set for a little bit before rolling it in the coconut. Now I have some shredded coconut here on a plate, and we're just going to take our mixture, roll it into small bite-sized balls, and roll it into the coconut. Now you can make these whatever size you'd like. I like to make them fairly small because these are very nutrient dense, so you're going to get full quickly from them. It's not like when you are having a sweet craving and you go and grab a sleeve of Oreo cookies and just down the whole thing. 
these will keep you full for much longer. So we make a small small little truffle, roll it in the coconut, and set it aside. So one of the things I love about this dessert is it's something that you can make ahead of time. I love bringing this to, if I'm having a dinner party or bringing it to, as a guest to somebody's home, I can make these ahead of time. They store really well in the freezer or the refrigerator. So you can make a large batch of them, store them in the freezer, and then just take them out as you need. They're very nutrient dense, so just one or two of these um, truffles are going to keep you feeling satiated for hours. So we're going to spread these on a plate so that we can store them in the refrigerator just to get them to chill and set. I like to space them out just a little bit so that they're easier to remove when we're ready to serve. So I'm going to finish plating up these truffles. Then I'm going to move them into the refrigerator so that they can chill. And we'll move on to our next recipe, the tempeh millet sun-dried tomato croquettes. So the truffles are chilling in the refrigerator, and now we're going to start on our next recipe. We have sun-dried tomato, tempeh, and millet croquettes with a pineapple salsa. So what we're going to start with is the millet. The millet I've had here soaking. It's, it was soaking for six hours and then rinsed and drained. The reason you want to soak your grains is that it releases the phytic acid in the grains and, and the enzyme inhibitors. It makes the grains more digestible. So we're going to just dry roast them for a couple of minutes until you, until you smell a nice nutty aroma. And once that aroma is going, then you add the water. We have three cups of water here for one cup of millet. Add a little bit of sea salt. Then we're going to add a piece of kombu. Kombu is a sea vegetable. We use kombu in cooking grains to increase the mineral content of the grains and also to improve the digestibility. A lot of people have trouble digesting grains and legumes, and this is the secret to that. Add it right into the pot. Give it a quick stir. We're going to bring this up to a boil. And as soon as it reaches a boil, we're going to lower the heat, put the cover on it, and simmer it for 20 minutes. Millet is a great grain to use. Uh, it's a gluten-free grain, it's high in protein, and it's a fast cooking grain. A lot of times we'll use brown rice as a gluten-free grain, but it takes a long time to cook. Millet is a quick and easy weekday meal because it's done in 20 minutes. So while that comes to a boil, we're going to put our tempeh into the pot. Tempeh is a fermented form of soy. It's very high in protein, and it's a great recipe to use, it's a great ingredient to use so I'm adding a little ginger, a little garlic, and a tiny bit of tamari. Tamari is a staple in Japanese cooking. It's an unprocessed form of soy sauce, so it's a much healthier version of soy sauce. And it adds a nice salty flavor. Tempeh doesn't really have any flavor on its own. You really need to add flavor to it. What I like about tempeh is it's low in fat, it's high in protein, and as a vegetarian, people are constantly asking me, well, how do you get your protein? Tempeh is a great source of vegetarian protein. It's also really good for somebody who's craving meat, but maybe wants to replace meat with something else. It has a meaty texture, and it's really filling. It, it holds you over for quite a while. So we brought the water to a boil, gonna lower it down to a simmer, and just let that cook covered for about 20 minutes. Now, in the meantime, we're going to start our mushrooms and our onions. Now notice I did not add any olive oil to the pan. I'm doing a dry saute. I'm just stirring these two together, lowering the heat, and adding a little bit of sea salt. The sea salt will draw out the water in the onions and the mushrooms. And you just want to cook this for a few minutes until the onions become translucent and fragrant. You'll really start to smell the onions and the mushrooms. That smells delicious. And then just don't stir it too much, just let it sit. Okay. So while that is cooking, 
We're going to add some of our other ingredients into the mixing bowl. We have, we're using sun-dried tomatoes today in this recipe. Sun-dried tomatoes are a great complement for both the millet and the tempeh. Tempeh, since it doesn't have a lot of flavor on its own, sun-dried tomatoes pack a ton of flavor. And they're also very high in iron. So we're going to add those into the bowl. We have some chopped walnuts, which I ground in a spice grinder. You could use a food processor or your Vitamix or a spice grinder. Walnuts are a really great source of healthy fats. They're high in omega-3 fatty acids and they're high in protein as well. We have some spinach that we've diced up nice and small. And I'm adding the spinach raw. I haven't cooked it. Once we add in the tempeh and the millet, the heat of those two items are going to cook the spinach just by tossing it together. I have a little bit of brown rice flour, just a couple tablespoons. That will help bind the croquette together. And it's a gluten-free flour. Adding a little bit of cayenne pepper. Just add a little bit of spice, make that flavor pop. Some fresh squeezed lemon juice. And some mirin and some brown rice vinegar. Okay, let's take that tempeh. That looks done. So we're gonna turn off the heat on the tempeh. Just grab those out with my tongs. And then you can set these aside to cool, or you can just use them right as is. And I'm also going to turn off the heat on our vegetables. You can smell, you know they're done when the onion looks translucent and there's a lot of fragrance coming off of them. Onions and mushrooms are a great way to add flavor. Just going to give that a quick stir. And then I'm going to use my box grater to grate the tempeh. So we're going to finish grating the tempeh. Tempeh, if you don't have a box grater, it's fine. A lot of times I just crumble it up with my hands. It's really, it's soft, so it just kind of crumbles if you just squeeze it. Um, but it is best to let, allow it to cool a little bit. If you try to do it when it comes right off the stove, it you know, will burn you. Um, while we're grating, I'm just going to take a pause to shut off the heat on the millet because that is done. And we're just going to let that sit on the heat with the cover on for a few minutes while we finish this. It's important to add the millet to this mixture while it's warm. If you let the millet get too cool and then you add it, it won't bind well. So we want to roll these into croquettes and they need to stick together. So you want the millet to be a little bit sticky. It just makes it a lot easier to bind the croquettes together. Okay, so we have our tempeh grated. Now we're gonna add the millet. Now remember when we put in the sea vegetable at the beginning, the kombu expands to a larger size than when we put it in. And all we need to do is remove it and you can discard it. The minerals that were in the kombu are now in the millet. So we're just going to add this in here. Set that aside. And let's just stir all this together. Just blending everything. Well, this makes such a nice color. It's actually a great recipe to make around the holidays with the red and the green. It's very colorful. Okay, so we're going to take this mixture and we're going to roll them into small croquettes. You can choose what, whatever size you're comfortable with, but I like to keep them so that I like to serve these more as an appetizer a lot of times, so I keep them a manageable size so I can put maybe two on a plate for somebody so the serving with the pineapple chutney on the side.
the fresh herbs. You can smell the fresh herbs. They smell delicious. I use fresh herbs a lot when I'm cooking. They add so much flavor as well as many health benefits. Okay. And once these are all rolled out, we're going to place them in an oven at 350 degrees for 20 minutes for them to bake. You just want the tops to be a little bit firm. So this is a nice high protein entree that you can use. Great weeknight meal. I love these because I can make them ahead of time. They freeze well. I like to make a double batch. And if I'm having a dinner party, I can make them in the morning or even the day before and have them ready to go when people arrive so that I'm not stressed out. It's very easy and they make a nice presentation. Whenever I'm cooking, you want to minimize the effort that you put out. And a lot of people will, one of their complaints when they're starting to eat a healthier diet is they say, oh, it's so time consuming, I just don't have the time to do this. So we try to make the most out of the effort that we put in. So if I cook once, I try to have make double size so that I have leftovers for a quick meal during the week. Okay, so we're down to our last croquette here. Okay, so they are ready to be popped into the oven. I'm going to put them in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. And while they're cooking, we're going to throw together a quick pineapple chutney and then move on to our next recipe. Okay, so now that the croquettes are in the oven, we're going to start our last recipe, which is our kale salad. We have a kale salad with currants, sunflower seeds, cherry tomatoes, and a cashew parmesan cheese. Let's start with the cashew parmesan cheese because that requires going into the oven for 15 minutes. So I like to take the um, cashews, and you can use either a food processor or a spice grinder. So I'm just going to use this spice grinder and do half of a half a batch at a time. And you want to grind them until that they get the consistency of a powder, like a flour, a coarse flour. The spice grinder is a convenient tool to have in your kitchen for grinding any small amounts of black seed, chia seed, anything that you want when you don't want to take out the whole food processor. We'll just pulse it a couple times to get those bigger chunks out. Pour that in here. And then finish the rest of them. You'll see, if you come up with a couple chunks that are still in there, you can throw them right back in. The other ingredient that goes into the cashew cheese is nutritional yeast. in the nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is a great source of vitamin B12, which is um, something good to supplement when you're eating an animal, when you're not eating animal protein. We're going to add in a pinch of Himalayan sea salt and just stir this together until it's well blended. Now this tastes amazingly like cheese, even though it's dairy free. Um, a lot of people have reported that when they give up dairy, a lot of the symptoms, just various health complaints that they've had clear up on their own. Dairy is something that we've been programmed to believe that we need for as a source of calcium in our diet, but there are many other vegetarian ways that we can get calcium in our diet, such as our leafy green vegetables. So, um, but dairy is something that 
Cheese in particular is something that people tend to crave once you give up dairy. I know myself, whenever I give up dairy, I start to crave cheese. And this is the perfect solution. Creating one of these dairy-free cheeses, the nutritional yeast adds a really nice flavor to it. Now, if you have some large chunks, my spice grinder did not hit. I'm just going to pick those out. I could put them back into the spice grinder and grind these up. I'm just going to remove them for now. And I'm going to take this, just spread it into a thin layer. So this is ready to pop into the oven. I'm going to put it in at 250 degrees for 15 minutes. So while that is baking, we're going to move on to make the rest of our kale salad. So kale is my favorite vegetable. Dark leafy greens are lacking in most people's diet. And a lot of people are afraid of kale. They don't know what to do with it. They think it tastes bitter. They have a hard time digesting it. This salad is my solution to that. I bring this to every party I go to and people rave about it and beg for the recipe. It's a way to take kale, which tends to be a hard, bitter green and make it softer, easier to digest, and more flavorful. So the way to prepare it is quite simple. Now kale has a thick stem that runs down um, the length of it. An easy way to prepare kale is just to rip the leaves off with your hands and discard the stem or put it into your compost and just tear it up like this. It really takes minimal effort to prepare the salad. If you'd like to use a knife and prepare the salad, you can cut the stem out. You can roll the leaf up. It is a hearty leaf, and then just chop it small, like in a chiffonade, or whatever size you like. So, whatever your preference. I tend to just rip the leaves. It's a quick and easy way to do it. It's something you can get your kids involved in helping you because it doesn't require a lot of skill in the kitchen. Now, kale is a fabulous addition to your diet. If you are somebody who is not eating dairy, for example, um, kale is very high in calcium. We've been led to believe that we need dairy for calcium and strong bones, but actually dark leafy greens are an excellent source of calcium. <clears throat> and there's something that's really lacking in most people's diet. I try to add kale, I try to sneak dark leafy greens in to my diet in a variety of ways, adding a little bit to a smoothie in the morning or to juices adding them into soups and stir fries. There's a, great, a number of ways that you can add greens into your diet. They enrich the blood. They're high, kale is high in folic acid, high in fiber, high in antioxidants. Redu they help to reduce your risk of developing cancer and heart disease. Okay, so to help make this leaf a little softer and easier to digest, what we're going to do is mix up a quick dressing of some lemon juice and olive oil and a little bit of sea salt. And then just whisk that together. And we're gonna add that dressing right to the kale right now. And then just massage it into the leaves really work it in there. And what this does, it starts to pre-digest the leaves for you so that they become softer and easier for your body to digest. Now what's nice about this salad is you can make this ahead of time. I actually prefer it when I make it about an hour before I'm going to serve it because it just tastes better. You allow the flavors to blend and it allows the leaves to soften a bit. Most salads, you can't do that. You have to dress them right at the last minute. Okay. So we have the leaves. If you were to make it ahead of time, I would stop here and add the rest of the ingredients right, at, right before serving. But we're going to move right ahead. We're going to add our currants. Currants add a nice sweetness to counteract the bitterness of the leaves. So we're adding the our sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds are a great way to get healthy fats into the recipe and into your diet in general. Sunflower seeds are an underutilized ingredient. They're actually very inexpensive and they're high in protein and high in essential fatty acids, which are lacking in most people's diet. They also, in a dish like this, they add a nice crunch. So you want to have not only a variety of flavors to make a complex dish, but also a variety of textures. And then the last thing we're going to add in are the cherry tomatoes. And we're just going to toss this together. And then the salad is ready to sprinkle with the cashew parmesan cheese. And that's it. That looks good.
looks delicious. And it's, I like to use the yellow cherry tomatoes because they add a nice pop of color against the green leaves of the kale. It makes for a very pretty dish. You, of course, could use red tomatoes but um, I like the, the color of the yellow. And you can also vary the ingredients that we put in here. Some alterations of this salad that I make at home, I love to add avocado. Avocado is another way to get great healthy fats into your diet. Um, it's, it's rich in nutrients, it's creamy. Um, I also like to add red pepper for also another spark of color and a nice crunchiness and sweetness. It goes well with the kale. So don't be afraid to experiment in, this, in the kitchen with ingredients that you have on hand and just ingredients that you like. Now, I smell the cashew cheese is just about ready, so we're gonna take a couple minutes and clean this up and then come back and present all the recipes that we made today. So, everything is done, everything is plated, and now we're gonna taste. I'm gonna take a little bit of the cashew Parmesan cheese, sprinkle it over the salad, Very good. The cashew cheese, the currants, nice blend of flavors, nice blend of textures, excellent. We have the tempeh with the pineapple chutney right on top. Very good. That chutney, the sweetness of the pineapple pairs perfectly with the sun-dried tomatoes and the tempeh and millet, excellent. And then the last, this is the one I was looking forward to the most, the truffle. Mmm, these, the wild orange in these really makes the flavor pop. I love these. Now, there are many things in life that you don't have control over, but you do have control over what you put into your body. You have the power of choice. You can choose sickness or you can choose health with every single bite. Every bite counts. So choose well and be well.